Life on Earth began in the ocean. That's why it is the domain of many of the planet's oldest creatures, like sharks and sea urchins. But the growth of life has been a long and gradual process. The first were microscopic, single-celled organisms that had simple forms. Sea sponges, which are still found in the oceans of today, are believed to have been the first multicellular life forms. The very first creatures to have multiple organs, however, were the jellyfish. Some scientists believe that these seemingly alien creatures may have first appeared as long ago as 700 million years. Despite the name, however, they are not actually fish at all. Jellyfish belong to the phylum Cnidaria, which also includes other marine invertebrates like coral and sea anemones. They are placed in a class called Cyphozoa. When you look at a jellyfish, it's hard not to be captivated by the uniqueness of its appearance. I'm Donald, and this is my assistant, Bear. Today, we will take a closer look at the body structures of jellyfish to learn how they've survived and functioned for all these millions of years. Jellyfish have no bones, brain, heart, or even blood. Only 5% of their bodies are solid matter, while the rest is just water. The body of a jellyfish is called a bell. It sort of looks like a cup, doesn't it? The first scientists to study jellyfish thought so too. The name of the class Cyphozoa is derived from the Greek term skyphos, which is a type of drinking cup. The bell itself is made of three layers. The first layer is the epidermis, which is the outermost layer that protects the tissue inside the body. In the middle is a layer made of a thick gelatinous substance called mesoglia, which feels very much like actual jelly. This middle layer contains important proteins, provides structural support, and helps jellyfish float through the water. Finally, the innermost layer is called the gastrodermis, which helps with digestion and absorbing nutrients. Underneath the bell, you'll find an opening called the digestive, or gastrovascular cavity. This serves a dual purpose. It acts as both the mouth and the anus. When jellyfish digest their food, enzymes are secreted into this opening. This breaks down the food, and nutrients are absorbed by cells aligning the cavity. Attached to the bell are long, thin tentacles, which deliver a painful sting. The ability to sting comes from poisonous cells called nematocysts, which are like tiny harpoons on the tentacles. Most of the time, they stay coiled up inside a capsule. Each one has a special trigger structure called a nidocil. These activate when the tentacle makes physical contact with something. The hinged operculum, which is like a lid, opens up to release the barbs of the nematocysts, thereby injecting the venom. Jellyfish use their stings both to capture prey and to defend themselves. The severity of the sting depends on the species. Some are just irritating, while others can be life-threatening. In addition to tentacles, some jellyfish also have oral arms. Like the tentacles, oral arms can also sting. However, jellyfish mainly use these appendages to move captured prey into their mouths. A number of species also have sensory organs called ropalia, or ropalium in the singular form. They function very much like eyes, being used to sense light, movement, or direction. Light-sensitive organs called ocelli can detect changes in the intensity of light. Jellyfish use statholiths, which are dense crystals, to detect their gravitational orientation. Jellyfish have changed very little throughout the ages of their existence. This gives testament to the success of their survival. Many other creatures have come and gone, but the jellyfish swim on. Their story is truly a remarkable one. But whether in the sea or on the land, 
There is more about the wild world to discover every day. Never stop exploring. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on our next adventure.